I watched the movie Suffragette this year and there's something there that the main character says that's quite um, significant for me and she says something like um, why should you men just men make decisions that control and govern the lives of women well I feel like we're still there because there isn't even a third of Parliament that are women. So we're not really represented. So if we're not really represented, how is it a democracy? I had my first child in 1976. I started working in a bank in 1974. I was told I would be promoted and sent on training courses and I was good at the job, they liked me. And once I got married, they said, oh, you might have children. We won't send you on any courses. We won't train you. And that's how it was then. I have a bit of a beef with the government at the moment saying these changes they've done to women's state pension, say for women like me born in the 1950s, uh, they've done it in the name of equality. They want to equalise us. Well, they're actually making us less equal or more unequal because we've had a lifetime of working in equality, despite legislation, which is theoretical. If you look at life in reality, which is what the gender pay gap is about, they don't match up. I've got an analogy as a woman in my life, and it's a scarf. It's knitting a scarf. So if you think about life as knitting a scarf, as a woman who was born in the 50s, bang in the middle of the 50s, I feel like I've been knitting my scarf with my hands tied together. My male counterparts haven't. They've been knitting their scarves with the hands free. And now I've got near to the later stages of my life, I feel like the government have chopped my hands off and I'm never gonna finish that scarf. So they do need to take on board the fact that women are poorer, even well-paid women earn less, and once women of this cohort get to 60, over the age of 60, they earn even less than the men. So I know as a woman, I've retired with a lot less than I know I would have done if I was a man. I'd actually been divorced um, in the 1990s, sort of the late 1990s, and in the divorce courts in 1998, a judge relied on the fact that I would get my state pension at 60. She didn't give me a share of my ex-husband's pensions. I've only discovered since I've joined up with WASPI in the last few months that those changes occurred in 1995. So why didn't a judge know in 1998 in the family court? I really don't understand that. And the government are now saying that I should have known in 1995. Well, if a judge didn't know, how would I know? So that meant then that I had to take full employment in my mid-40s and start from scratch, really. So my message to policymakers really is, think carefully, we're all human beings. When people are treated very badly, especially in marriages, it needs exposing the detail he's looking at. And I think my life and that of my children could have taken a different course. After my son died, I found it really hard to go back into work. Um, so I came out of my employment about a year ago. So that was about nine months before my 60th birthday. And I waited until my 60th birthday to actually um, claim my teacher's pension. And I was applying for part-time jobs then. Um, and. I went for a mammogram and I was told I got breast cancer, I was recalled. It's difficult when you're using up your savings and it does seem a shame when you've penny pinched in your younger adult life and you've planned for some kind of retirement and future and then somebody changes it all at the last minute. It's like you can never have that life. Back to the scarf. As a woman you feel very disempowered. I felt very disempowered. I suppose to some extent when I was younger, very disempowered when I was married, very disempowered when I got divorced, and then now this again. They're not interested in women being part of society in that way.
as they said on the suffragette movie we're 50 percent of the population we're in every home every house we're not going to go away i'm dr shirley presler i'm a chartered psychologist and a retired university lecturer and i would describe myself as a woman as warm generous and empathic